copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 136 regarding a murder and suicide at 1929 South Grand Avenue. See the battalion fire chief in charge for details. That's all. Rolls and quest. <laughs> the city chemist's office, we find Earl Crawford, chief chemist, working over his tubes and reports. He turns to his co-worker with a sigh of satisfaction. Well, Jack, I've discovered the secret. What are you working on? It smells like gasoline. It is. A very mysterious gasoline. Ever since the city started buying this gasoline, enthusiastic reports have claimed our cars were more efficient than ever. The police cars drive faster, the fire engines develop more power... And the records show we're getting greater mileage per gallon than ever before. We're using Rio Grande crack gasoline now in all city cars, aren't we? Is it that good? Well, it's caused so much comment that they asked me to analyze some Rio Grande crack and tell them if it was dope in some way or to find the secret of its sensational performance. I see. It does contain tetraethyl, doesn't it? Oh, yes, but other gasolines have tetraethyl, too. No, the secret of Rio Grande's outstanding performance is its refining process. It's cracked into tiny molecules, infinitesimal atoms. Obviously, by a patented process, for I've never seen any other gasoline so finely cracked. No wonder it's so much faster than other gasolines. That cracking process is the reason why Rio Grande cracked gasoline gives greater speed, power, and mileage than other gasoline. You've sold me. I'm going to use Rio Grande cracked in my own car. I see now why more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment are powered by Rio Grande cracked gasoline wherever it is sold than any other brand. <laughs> Now it is our pleasure to present Captain Bert Wallace, head of the homicide squad of the Los Angeles Police Department. Captain Wallace. Good evening, friends. Tonight you will hear dramatize the story of a perfect crime, which, like all perfect crimes, was a little imperfect. If the carefully laid plans of the criminal had worked, perhaps he would have escaped. But there seems to be some truth in the belief that there is a law of compensation. I have, in my years of experience in police work, Never known of a case where a man broke the laws of society that he was not eventually made to pay for his misdeed. You can break every law but the law of compensation, and in the end, it delivers you up for an accounting with the society you have outraged. Smith, and let some of this smoke out. I want to see what started this. Yes, sir. That's better. Hey, hey Chief, look here on the floor. Blood. Yeah. And here on this dish cupboard. Splattered all over the place. Looks like we've got more than a little fire here. Hey, what the devil's this? Hmm, looks like it might have been a bird or something. Mm. You're right. It was a bird. Probably a parrot. Hey, you'd think a parrot would have enough sense to keep away from a fire, wouldn't you, Chief? I don't think this parrot had anything to say in the matter. His neck's been around. What do you mean? You mean somebody killed the bird? That's what it looks like. Well, well, it don't make sense. Maybe this would help. Look here at this woman. See her head? Yeah. Yeah, her skull is mashed. Right. I can't tell anything about the man too burned. We'll have to let an autopsy show whether he was killed or not. Well, that's all the excitement, Chief. I've read better from Central. Glad you got here. We found something that should interest you, boys. Here on the bed. Oh. Fire got him, huh? I don't think so. The woman's skull's been smashed with something. I can't tell about the man. Hmm. All right. Patton, you better get Munns up here with his camera and get some shots of this before we move them. And you can tell those reporters outside they can come in now. 
Hey, they'll love this. Police photographs are taken of the grizzly discovery, and the bodies are removed to the morgue for an autopsy. And in the burn department, lead veteran Patton, surrounded by reporters, firemen, and occupants of the apartment house, begin a minute investigation. All right, fellas, get your pictures and then give us a chance. What do you make of it, lad? You got any ideas? I can't say anything yet, but it looks like murder and suicide. Okay, thanks. Uh, hold it a minute, Ledbetter. Huh? Uh, stand back over the bed, will you? Uh, that's it. That's right, still. Uh, thanks. That was a while. All right, boys, now you got enough. How about clearing up? Yeah, I will. Shut the door, Pat. Maybe we can get some work done. Yeah, no chance of getting any fingerprints from anything now. That mob fixed that. Yeah. Well, come on. I want to get a look at that bed. You know, there's a lot of things here that don't make sense. That parrot, for instance? Yeah, that and other things, too. Number one, how did the fire start? You can't just set a match to a bed and have it burn this much. Well, here's the answer to that. Under the bed. A bunch of watered paper, half burnt. What's that lying there? Electric heater? Hmm. Looks like it was a heater. Hey, what the devil? What have you found now? This heater has a gadget attached to it. Take a look for yourself. Well, of all... <laughs> look here. There, this is what started the fire, all right. And I think it establishes this as a double murder. Hmm. See here? This watch is wired into the heater cord so that at a certain time, the minute hand will make contact and start the heater. And the heater starts the paper burning, and from there, <laughs> it's simple. Yeah, excepting that we don't know who did it. Yeah, right. Well, suppose you look around and see what else you can find while I question a few of the people in the building. Okay, Led. I'll stick here. If you find anything, I'll be down in the manager's apartment. Right. Everybody here, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Everyone I could find who knew anything. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you people to be quiet while I ask a few questions. I'll, uh, start with you. What's your name? Sproul's my name. I live directly under the barber's apartment. Well, did you hear anything last night that might have any bearing on this? Well, I heard some noise upstairs. What kind of noise, Mr. Sproul? Well, it might have been a scream, and then something fell to the floor. Hmm. What time was that? Oh, somewhere around 8.30 it must have been, because I remember I was listening to a radio program, and I heard the announcer say it was 8.30. Mm hmm Anyone else hear anything like that? No, sir. Yes, sir. I did. What's your name? Uh, Grant, sir. Edward Grant. I live right next to Mr. Uh, Sproul here. Well, if both you gentlemen heard what sounded like a scream, why didn't you investigate it? Well, you see, sir, I... I haven't been well. And I can't get up and downstairs so good. Oh. Anyway, well, I... I didn't give it much of a thought. And you, Mr. Sproul? Yes, I didn't think much about it either. Is that all you can tell me? No, sir. About 10.30, I heard someone moving around up there in the apartment. And then about 12, the noise stopped, and I figured the barbers had been making the noise and had gone to bed, so I went to sleep. Anything else happen? Well, to tell you the truth, I guess you're going to think I should have done something, but I didn't. I'm just naturally not suspicious. Mm -hmm. I understand, Mr. Sproul. Well, I woke up about 4.30, and I heard what sounded like someone wadding a paper upstairs. It struck me as kind of funny, but... I didn't think it was anything serious, so I listened till it stopped and then went back to sleep. Is that the last thing you heard until you woke up this morning? Yes, sir. I slept right through till I heard someone yelling fire, and then I got up and found the building was burning and got out. Oh, which one of you turned in the fire alarm? Uh, I did. Oh, you live here? Oh, no, sir, but I'm on the market across the street, and I was opening up about 6 o'clock this morning, and I saw the smoke coming out from that window in the apartment there. So I turned to the alarm and woke up everybody in the apartment house and told them to get out. Yeah, it's a good thing you happened to see that smoke. Yes, sir. Another 10 minutes, the whole place would have been burning. Big pardon, Lieutenant. Yes? Lieutenant Patton is outside. Says he wants to see you. Oh, thanks. I'm going to ask you people not to go away until I tell you to. I want to ask some more questions in a little while. Uh, how about me, Lieutenant? I've got a store to run. Well, well, I guess it'll be all right for you to go over to your store, but uh, stick around pretty close, if you will. Uh, yes, sir. I, I will, sir. All right. Oh, Pat? thought you might want to see this book I found in Barber's room. It's a list of the people who work for Mr. Barber at his auto park. Good. Let's see it. Not much here. A few names we might look up and talk to. You'll find out anything from the tenants? Yeah. A couple of guys in there practically listened to the whole thing, but didn't think enough about it to investigate. Mm. You got any leads on who might have done it? No. But I haven't finished yet. There's still a couple of people in there I haven't questioned. All right. Let's talk to them. Okay. Uh, this is Lieutenant Patton who's working with me. He has a few questions to ask you people, and then you can go. Can any one of you think of anybody that might have had a grudge against the barbers? Anyone who didn't like them? I don't think there was anybody didn't like them. They was a real nice couple. 
that was always so kind to everybody. And especially to that young fellow who worked for Mr. Barber. Treated him like a son. What's that? Why, uh, the young man who used to help him around the place here. What's his name? I don't know his last name. They called him Fred. Has he been around here lately? Oh, sure. He was around all the time, just like one of the family. Mm -hmm. Let me see that book again, Pat. Here you are. Fred. Fred. You don't think he done it, did you? Why, he was like one of the family. Yeah, yeah, so you said. No, I'm not saying he did it, but I'd like to have a little talk with him. Uh, yeah, Fred Stetler. Would that be his name, do you think? I don't know. I never heard his last one. But he wouldn't do a thing like this. Oh, of course not. Come on, Pat. We're going back to headquarters. Taking the remains of the heater and the ingenious timepiece attachment back to headquarters, led veteran Patton report to Captain Wallace, head of the homicide squad. Uh, here's the stuff we picked up out of the apartment, Captain. The fellow who figured this gadget out was pretty smart. He must have known something about watches and electricity to make this work. Well, that's something to go on. Incidentally, the coroner's report shows that both the bodies had been hit on the head with some heavy object. Might have been a hammer. That settles it, then. The suicide idea is definitely out. We're looking for a smart murderer. You know, I got an idea this Fred fellow that man told us about might know something. It doesn't seem very likely that a man who'd been on such close terms with them would murder them. Where's your motive? Well, there isn't any yet, but I'm still going to talk to him. You have his address? Yes, sir. It was in this book we found. Of course, this may not be the right Fred, but we'll find out soon enough. Was there anything you want us to do, Captain, or shall we go on and look for this fellow? Go ahead. This is your case. Busted. Yes, sir. Come on, Pat. Let's go. At the address given in the little book, the two detectives find that the man known as Fred Stetler is out. But from a neighbor, they learn... Well, sir, I don't know the fellow very well. Speak to him when I see him, that's about all. But it sure struck me funny the way he was acting yesterday. Seemed all sort of nervous-like and hardly even noticed me when I said hello. Mm-hmm. What else? Well, I remember that it struck me kind of funny about his car. What about his car? Well, last night I couldn't get to sleep and it was kind of warm. So I sat out here on the porch and smoked until pretty late. I guess it was about 1.30 when I went to bed. And Stetler hadn't come home yet. Was that unusual, Mr. Cook? Well, it was the first time I can remember that he was out so late. But that ain't all. In the morning, I woke up about 6.45 and looked out, and there was his car in front of the house. Now, I know he never leaves it out in the street. All his puts it in the back. Well, anyway, while I was looking out the window, the door opens, and he comes out of his house and walks to his car. I thought he was leaving early. But he didn't leave. What did he do, Mr. Cook? He looked around as though he was afraid someone might see him. And then he reached in and got some stuff out of the back of the car and took it in the house. What kind of stuff? Well, I couldn't see just what it was. But a little later, he started a fire out in the backyard and burned some things. I don't say he was doing anything wrong, mind you. But it sure looked funny. What happened after he burned the trash? He got in his car and drove away. That's the last time I've seen him. Hmm. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Cook. And I want to caution you not to tell anyone what you've told us or anything about our being here. That's very important. Won't say a word to no one. You can trust me. Good. Come on, lad. What do you say we poke around that trash heap out back? I'd like to see what he was so anxious to get rid of. Well, nothing much left here. Must have been a hot fire. Small boot there. Nothing unusual about that. Well, you better take them with us. Can't tell what's on them. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hmm? I hear a car out in front. Might be Stetler. Come on. Around the side where we can see. It's a young fellow. Looks like he's going to come right to this door. Come on. Just a minute, young fellow. Uh, huh? We want to talk to you. Why, sure. What about? You live here? Yes. And your name must be Stetler, that right? Yes. Say, who are you? Detectives. We want to ask you a few questions. Oh, well, do you mind if I go in the house for a minute? I'll be right back. No, not at all. We'll come with you. Um, all right. You're a friend of Mr. and Mrs. Barber, aren't you, Stetler? I, yes, I've known them some time. Well, they're pretty fond of you, aren't they? I guess they are, yes. Why'd you ask? Did you know that they had met with an accident? What? Had been murdered, in fact. Murdered? 
Oh, you cannot mean that. That is not possible. I'm afraid it's not only possible, but it's quite true, Stetler. They were found murdered and burned in their apartment this morning. Oh, but... We I... wondered what you knew about it. But I knew about it. But this is the first time I'd heard. Where were you last night, Stetler? I... I was here. All evening? Yes. That is almost all evening. Where were you at about 10.30? I don't know. Driving around somewhere, I think. You think? It would be better if you knew. What do you mean? You're not trying to say that I had anything to do with... With the, with the murder of your good friends, the barbers? That is ridiculous. I didn't even see them last night. Well, how did you know they were murdered last night? How? Uh, uh, you told me. That is how you, you told me a minute ago. Where'd you get the watch, Stedler? Watch? What watch? Why, well, that one on your wrist. Oh. What's the matter? You look as though you'd seen a ghost. Why, there's nothing. I, I'm a little upset by the news, that is all. Yes, of course. You would be, being such a good friend and all. Yes, they were very good friends of mine. What did you find so important to burn this morning, Stetler? Uh, in the backyard, I mean. Why, nothing in particular, just some trash. Just some trash, eh? Yes, I trash. think you'd better come down to the station with us, Mr. Stetler. Just for some routine questioning. At headquarters, Ned better first send several officers back to the suspect's home with orders to thoroughly ransack the place for clues. Then proceed with the questioning. Oh, uh, Mr. Stetler, the first thing I want to know is exactly where you were last night. We know you weren't at home until after 1.30. Well, I went over to see my girlfriend. I stayed there for a little while, and then I just drove around. I had a little argument with her, and it upset me. You didn't go anywhere near the barber's place? No. You know a good deal about electricity, don't you, Stetler? Why, not a lot, no. Why? Ever work as a watchmaker? No. What nationality are you? Swiss. Well, isn't it the Swiss who make such fine watches? I don't know. Swiss movement? I have one right here that says that on it. Very fine watch, too. What has that got to do with me? What are you talking about watches for? Oh, just to pass the time. You don't seem to want to talk, or do you? I have nothing to say. Oh, say, Led, huh? uh, speaking of watches, what happened to that one we had around here this morning? You know the one I mean. Oh, it's right here in this drawer. Hey, maybe Mr. Stetler would be interested, huh? That's an amazing little gadget, Stetler. Just an ordinary dollar watch to all appearances, but a mighty dangerous little toy. Yes? Yes. Ever seen anything like it before? No, I have not. The hour hand's missing, but the rest of it's all here, including some things that weren't on it when it was sold. Why don't you tell him where we found it? Well, I didn't think he'd be interested. Would you, Stetler? I... Yes, I suppose so. I don't know. Well, I don't think it will bore you. It was hooked up to an electric heater in the barber's apartment. Right under their bed, in fact. And it was wired up so that when 50 minutes had passed, it turned the heater on and started the fire. Clever, wasn't it? Yes, very. You're sure you've never seen it before? Of course I'm sure. Didn't I just tell you so? You're getting pretty excited over it. Well, naturally I'm upset. What did you argue with your girlfriend about, Fred? You said that you'd had an argument with your girlfriend last night, didn't you? Oh. Or was I mistaken? Oh, uh, last night, yes, I did have an argument, but that has got nothing to do with this. I, I don't see why I should tell you my personal affairs. All right, all right, it doesn't really matter. We'll just have to ask her, that's all. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, wait, wait, don't do that. I, I will tell you. Oh, never mind. Maybe she'd be more willing to talk. Uh, wait a minute, I, I do not want her to get mixed up in this. She's a nice girl and her family would not like it. Well, what's the matter, Stetler? Afraid her story won't jive with the one you told us? No, no, it is not that. Come in. Here's some things the boys found, Lieutenant. Oh, yes. Uh, just wait out there a minute and I'll be with you. If you'll excuse me a minute, Mr. Stetler. You carry on, will you, Pat? Sure thing. All right, Sergeant. What'd you find? These, Lieutenant. Well, well. Where were they? In a little workshop in Stetler's garage. Nice work, Sergeant. I'll check with you later about the other things. Right now, I've got the heat on, Stetler. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Stetler, I guess there's not much use in keeping you around here any longer. You mean I can go? Yeah, you may go, just as soon as you've told me where you got this. What is that? The hour hand off that little watch gadget that you'd never seen before. The boys say they found it in your workshop. It is a lie. Anyway, how do you know there's one off that watch? There's hundreds of watches like that. And I suppose there are hundreds of blood-stained trousers around every house, too, huh? What do you mean? The boys found a pair of pants in your place that had blood all over them. How do you account for that? Why, I... I... Uh, cut 
shot myself. Where? There. I, 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 you're just trying to confuse me. All right, now, Stetler, spill it. We've got enough on you to send you up. And you might just as well make it as easy on yourself as you can. I did not do it. You can't make me say I did. I did have nothing to do with it. Listen to me, Stetler. We've got the parts that were missing from that watch. We've got a pair of blood-soaked trousers that belong to you. No. We've got a pair of galoshes we found in your backyard with blood on them. They're not mine. We found a can in your car that had gasoline used to soak the barber's bed with before you set fire to it. No. Now stop shagging us around and come clean, will you? All right. All right, I... I will tell you all about it. When I stop pounding, I'll be like, I cannot stand it. All right, Stetler, start talking. All right, all right, don't ask me any more questions. I will tell you all about it. I did it because I wanted money. I had to have some money. But my girl was going to leave me. And I did not know how to get any, so I decided to rob the barbers. Well, last night I went over to their place about 10 o'clock, and when I got up there, they were out. Someone here at first. Uh, oh, shut up. I don't know why I don't bring your damn neck. You and your continual squawking. Uh, nuts. And if I'm not wrong, this is the drawer where she keeps her money. Huh. Oh, I'm not here. That's funny. Maybe it isn't this one. Oh, not here either. Now, what the devil... Plenty here, too. Now I will not have to worry you about Peggy. <laughs> She'll be plenty surprised when I show her this. <laughs> that is got it. Now to get out of here. that heater thing. Then I went back and put the bodies on the bed and wadded up a lot of paper and put it so the heater would start burning when it turned on. Then I poured gas that I'd brought with me on the bed and floor and started the watch and left. How much money did you get altogether, Stetler? About $40, I guess. I'm not sure. And you killed these people for $40? I killed them because I did not know what else to do. Don't ask me questions. I can't stand it anymore. I'm sorry I killed him. I don't know why I did it. Don't ask me any more questions. Fred Stetler was tried and found guilty of murder, two counts of burglary, and one count of arson. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, but after Alienist had checked his family case history, 
and found that his mother and uncle were both confined in an insane asylum in Switzerland and that his brother was a sufferer from epilepsy, the judge, in sentencing this man, made the positive injunction that in the event that Stetler should become insane, that he be sent to the state insane asylum and immediately upon his recovery should be returned to the state prison. Upon examination, doctors found Stetler to be not criminally insane, but mentally on balance to a marked degree. And so ends the story of the almost perfect crime. Had Stetler's little gadget gone off before the gasoline had evaporated, the entire room would undoubtedly have burned, eliminating the important clues that started the investigation. But his mistake was not in figuring his time rightly. He set the match, uh, he set the watch to go off in an hour and forgot that gasoline evaporates in much less time. So we were able to put this killer safely behind the bars. Thank you, Captain Wallace. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight and tomorrow, thousands of Calling All Cars fans will go to their neighborhood Rio Grande dealer and ask for a free copy of the latest Calling All Cars news. Get your copy and read about the 14 free gifts for boys and girls given away by Rio Grande to users of cracked gasoline. The same gasoline specified for police and emergency cars of the West's largest cities and counties. If you are a user of cracked gasoline, you are already enjoying police car performance in your own car. And while it's a thrill to test the greater speed and power cracked gasoline gives you, remember your motor needs perfect lubrication at high speeds. Most motor oils break down as you speed up, especially in hot weather. We urge you to protect your motor at all speeds with Sinclair motor oils. They are especially refined to remove waste products, such as wax and jelly, the useless part of most motor oils that is so quickly used up in your car, leaving carbon and gummy deposits. Use Sinclair motor oils in your crankcase, and you are guaranteed perfect motor lubrication under all conditions and at top speed. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars to cancellation broadcast 136. Suspect in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rolls and quits.